Right, new driver from Mizuno and a new strap line is the next generation of stability. And with every other manufacturer claiming to be longer, faster ball speeds, are Mizuno going to gain respect from consumers or just it really just lessen the excitement? In fact, in the latest information, the press release, so to speak, that Mizuno sent me, they openly acknowledged that ball speeds are at their limits, as we all know, but very rarely spoken about by the manufacturer. They also claim that launch angles and spin rates have been optimized now. And the final route in terms of driver performance is all about consistency. Right, so welcome to the new STX and STZ drivers from Mizuno. We'll talk about how they differ very, very shortly. But like I said in the intro, Mizuno are claiming these to be very consistent and they're talking about off-center hits. And I'm certainly the man to put that theory to the test. But interestingly, this whole thing led by feedback from tour players who were reluctant, their last reason, if you like, not to put Mizuno driver in the bag was about drop-off in ball speeds for off-center hits. Now, if that's happening for a tour player, then it's certainly gonna affect an average golfer. So I'll be trying both of these out and seeing what we do in terms of consistency or what I do in terms of consistency. We'll again look at impact location, see where we get drop-offs in terms of ball speed and try and measure Mizuno's claim. I will do that very, very shortly. But before we do that, let me just tell you on how these two drivers differ in their setup and what performance attributes you're expected to see. Right, so we've got two different models, as you can see on the table. The Z model is what they call a straight flight low spin, and the CG position on that is right at the very back and center. Then we've got the X model. It said it's set up with a slight draw bias, and as you can see from the weight position, it's slightly in towards that heel side. It says it's for moderate swing speeds, and like I said, to promote a right to left ball flight. My idea of kind of like forgiveness and weight position and CG position is it's almost, I would expect more forgiveness from the central location of that Z model, but we'll see and find out as we go. But obviously what we're expecting to see is that more right to left ball flight from the X model. That'll be put to the test very shortly. Let's get back inside and keep on hitting some golf balls. Plenty of data collected and the first thing we're going to look at is, uh, well their claim, next generation of stability, is that really a thing or not? Let's go back inside and just check where I've been hitting these balls across the club face and see if these are as forgiving as Mizuno claim they are. I'm going to go through a number of shots here um, that you can have a look at. So centre hits for the first two, there's one out there heel, we've seen a little bit of drop off in carry distance there and also in ball speed. One very much off the bottom grooves, yet again, just a drop off in, um, in both yardage and in ball speed. We haven't got one on there recorded. Let's see what we've got. Back up to near a center strike. Didn't get, the, um, didn't get a recorded data on that shot. And again, more out the middle, we get up to 235. That's the STX driver that you've just looked at there. And I would say that there's certainly a drop off in terms of uh, ball speeds for off center hits, not a massive one. Let's do the same with the STZ. There's one really um, out of the toe, but doesn't get impacted in terms of carry distance nor ball speed. One out the center, one again a little bit low. You can see I certainly spread it around a bit this morning. One bang out the center, 234, just slightly out of center, 238. I mean, there's no real major. I think we've seen the first shots in there. Let's bring that back up again on screen. That 237 carry was that one that was slight out to the toe end. Um, didn't drop off in yardage, nor in terms of ball speed. Have we seen anything major in what I've collected so far? I probably would say nothing conclusive, although there is some suggestion there that the sweet spot is, certainly on the shot you're looking at right now, um, as big as we'd expect it to be. Um, but I would remain, I think it's a type of test that you would need to hit 50 shots with each of the drivers to really take a look at 
how many off center hits can we really see if there's a drop off or not and slightly worrying i suppose on that stx that we've certainly seen a drop off in those couple of shots that were low in the face um and that last one again yeah pretty much low in the face where we've seen a little bit of a drop off that would concern me just a little bit anyway back inside right so interesting to see there in terms of consistency and stability that mizuno is suggesting we kind of seen it a little bit but i don't think we've seen anything different than we've seen before in terms of other manufacturers performance at least anyway i think that um forgiveness has been a thing in recent years in terms of drivers that sweet spot is certainly getting bigger which is always a thumbs up for average golfers We'll get to the data in the end in terms of overall performance, but first of all, I just want to see how these two drivers look. From the crown and address, they're very, very similar indeed. At first glance, you'd hardly notice the difference. They've got this kind of new look that Mizuno have adopted in the last couple of years, that thicker black line at the front into the chequered flag elements, the Mizuno Chevron showing you where the center of the club face is. My thing with the look is it, it, it's okay but it does nothing to assist with alignments. And if anything, my criticism might be, it's a little bit distracting, if anything, but it certainly does nothing to aid or assist where I think other driver heads possibly do help frame the ball a little bit better. In terms of underneath the club head, the shelf appeal thing, I think, as you'd expect from Mizuno, it's a real high quality finish. And the only thing you can see that differs, again, is that positioning of the weight location. I mean, overall, a good looking driver with a good finish to it. I'd just like to quickly see if we can pick up any audio and see if we can notice any differences in terms of the sound or how good the two drivers sound or not. It's just a, I mean, it's just a nice balance between, we'll try the other driver as well, Interestingly enough for the data, we'll have the same shaft in both clubs before anybody picks up on that. But it's just got that fine balance is what I was going to say between something that feels like it's going off the club face, but not going off like a gunshot. Again, two decent balls there, huh? We haven't got the uh, trackman switched on right now, but that was, again, I don't know how much you pick up, but I just think they've done a really good job of aesthetically it's got a thumbs up and from a sound perspective really good right now just in their drives and in their full range they've just got a nice balance between everything in terms of that performance sound aesthetics it's a really good position they've got themselves in now in this kind of fairways and driver market right let's start off by going back to the video and look at what mizuno claimed in terms of uh, what each of these drivers was set up in terms of that weighting don't forget that 20 gram weight was in a different place for each of these drivers one was supposed to promote a draw bias the other one a straight ball flight so the first thing for me in terms of data is what i would like to see is did that actually ring true so we're going to start off with a dispersion chart the red dots that you see are from that STX that's the draw bias the blue dots are from the STZ which is the straight flight and I think it goes as far as to say there's not a huge difference in it but virtually every ball I hit with the straight ball flight was right of target line if you like it probably did travel straighter and more down the line than I aimed and that red dot that you can see are lower still, a few are out to that right hand side, which I didn't quite get moving. But on the STX, I probably would say you're seeing those balls a lot more close to the central line and left of central line. So I think, first of all, some proof there that that weighting system actually did work. So that, again, just depends on your current shot type. And if you've got a big sort of uh, fade in your game, then maybe that weighting system into that sort of... Uh, heel area might be a big help for you in terms of then performance of the two drivers well do i always do i'll put the whole lot of data up at the end of these videos for you to have a look and break it down yourself but for now i'm just going to put up the two average set of numbers and what you'll see there is a lot of similarities to say the least um, we've got half a yard setting them uh, separating them in, in carry we've got um what is it half a degree not even that in terms of launch ball speeds 0 0.6 mile an hour separating them 100 revs of spin and my uh, swing club head speed remain constant it was i mean i suppose a good thing there wasn't one that performed different than the other in terms of the um the face itself we've already had a look at that sort of forgiveness factor 
and that's something that is again very much key to Mizuno's message in this. I think for me in terms of the performance anything in and around um, that 240 carry distance with driver is probably where I'd like it to be so it fell off a little bit shorter than, uh, than what I'd have hoped but having said that the drives that I hit and the drives that we recorded data from going back to that initial dispersion chart, I would say pretty much most of them are finding the fairway, maybe a couple leaked out to the right. So the overall summary would be that Mizuno have certainly paid a lot of attention to off centre hits. They've certainly looked at that kind of consistency and dispersion. And I think it'd be hard to argue that they haven't done a good job and that has happened. The thing is that the only thing I would say is that they've not done anything different than we've already seen. I probably think that is just down to this mere fact now that ball speeds are now at their limits. We're not going to see anything in terms of distance. So they're focusing their attentions on consistency. Yes, it does seem to have happened. But ultimately, going back to the beginning of the video, is that an exciting thing to hear about? Or is it we want to hear the story about ball speeds and distance? Otherwise, drivers become less exciting. That's a question that you still need to answer. But for me, like I said, very, very good overall. Massive thumbs up in terms of performance, in terms of the way they look. It's hard to knock them, as it is with most products right now. So it's finding those little fine gaps. And the one final thing to mention, I almost forgot it, is the price tag. These are going to be 399 in terms of their RRP. What they then sell at, I don't know. You're not saving... A lot of money now by choosing a Mizuno driver, which perhaps were a couple of years ago. I've already mentioned in terms of the quality of the build. Maybe that's not something that they should be looking to do anyway. Right, as ever, interested in your comments, your feedback, let me know down below. I'm always interested to know, with big releases like the Stealth and the Rogue that we've seen in recent months, is the Mizuno driver going to be one of those ones that you look to try? Let me know in the comments below, and I will see you all very soon. Bye for now.